We're getting the band back together with Tom Schreier of Zone Coverage. What a great day this is going to be. We're going to talk about Royce Lewis, where the Twins are headed, and what the rest of the division looks like. This is Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, hey, what do you say? Thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. And of course, we're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As a reminder, please feel free to hang out in the comments on YouTube. We'll do our best to be active, hang out in there and chat. So yeah, come hang out. Also, too, if you have questions you want answered on the show, in the seventh inning stretch, Voice of the Fan, which we have most shows, but not this one, Hit me up in the comments on Twitter or uh, DMs at Brandon underscore Warren at Locked On Twins. Also, two Locked On Twins breathless post game minute shows up on your shorts column on YouTube. Check those out as soon as we can after each game. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And finally. The Twins play the Guardians at Target Field on Friday, 7, 10 p.m. first pitch. Bailey Ober, Big Tall Bailey, taking the mound against Aaron Savali. Catch every pitch of the Twins' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM with Corey and Danny. Corey had an exciting walk-off call in Thursday night's game, but it's on the SXM app. Just search Twins. So, Tom, we're in the opener. What's going on, man? How are you? Yeah, it's exciting to be back. I know I've done some locked on with uh, Luke Gimmon, former former roommate, <laughs> uh, Sam, you know, Reef, uh, um, Luke Braun, who was with us for a little while. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's exciting to talk some twins. I was saying it finally it kind of feels like baseball time, right? It's uh, twins and guardians. So AL Central matchup, good weather. Yep. Exciting baseball in a very weird way. But yeah, exciting game last night. So you've been getting out to the ballpark, though? Yeah, I try to get there like, you know, two or three games, depending on how long the series is. Lou Hennessy helping us out, kind of a young up and coming writer, worked for Inside Edge for a little bit. He knows more about the sabermetrics and analytics and stuff like that than I do. Uh, but yeah, we have daily stuff on zone coverage, uh, daily coverage of the Twins. Right on, right on. So what is, we'll get to Royce Lewis in just a second, but what's the vibe around this team like this year? Because I feel like every team, Every Twins team has a different vibe. And so mm-hmm. 2015, when Tory Hunter came back, yeah. it was the dance parties and all that. In 2019, you had all the home runs and yeah. Nelson Cruz and all that stuff. But um, now that you guys are back fully in the clubhouse and all that fun stuff, is there a distinct vibe? Because since I've been there, most of the team is turned over. Byron Buck's yeah. is still there. Max Kepler's still there. But other Polanco. than that, yeah. yeah, Jorge Polanco, it's a pretty limited, though, uh, group. You know, I've talked to Alex Kirilov before, but that's about it. What's the vibe of this team right now? Yeah, I think they want it. They're kind of telling us, like, we're good, right? I think of that, like, Byron Bucks, and I think this was in L.A., had that quote where he's like, we're nasty, right? And mm-hmm. um, even Pablo Lopez, you know, he admitted fully, like, he was not he was not good. I mean, in that inning, he was upset he walked the, the leadoff guy the nine hole and then you know he's saying he was just trying to induce ground balls and kind of have the defense take care of things for him not a bad approach he should be aggressive or whatever but obviously that that inning and spooled on him fortunate to start where he started well um in the first but you know he said look this is a team win and i think that's right i mean in the sense that literally like every guy played at some point in that game um uh but you know i think they you know, when you look at it, it's like if you just looked at it in a vacuum, you'd be like, well, they are doing well. They took a series, the season series from the Astros, from the Yankees, first time since 2001, won a game in Dodger Stadium, right? Um, if you look at the Pythagorean record or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. They should be like a 33 or 34 win team. Right. And yet, you know, they're hovering around 500, dangerously close to kind of falling into the morass in the AL Central. So they, I think they believe that they have something. Obviously, they have some time to prove it. But kind of to use the Parcells line, right? In a in a for a baseball team, you are what your record is. So two times in the last four games, the Twins have won games that I think you and I and pretty much everybody would have <laughs> never expected them to. And at the forefront of it, there's a nice segue into Royce Lewis. Um, first and foremost, though, 
it's kind of refreshing to see the Twins finally win some of those games that they're up against the odds because it seems like they've given away those games most of the season. Yeah, I mean, I think they've needed guys like Lewis. Lewis, every team does. Um, someone who can hit 300 and good defensive player and, and bring someone in a clubhouse, but also just like ready for those big moments. I, The team will insist like it's a small sample in terms of runners in scoring position. That's fair. It just has hurt them, right? Mm -hmm. And like Lewis just looked ready from the get-go. I had asked him like, do you feel like kind of just the the rule like of baseball or whatever the fact that he was on this long term injured list like that was kind of holding it back? He was like, yeah. Now to be fair, I'm sure the day after surgery he was he felt like he could go back and and yeah. play. But like I think there was some sense that again like these are some of these are technicalities. The team's being safe with him as safe as possible. But like he has proven it in every way, right? I mean, I, I heard you breaking down after the game. Like, look, this guy comes up, it's a three run bomb, ties the game, and then even in that moment where. Um, I thought they were just like dead in the water. I thought they were actually pulling players out just like because the game had mm -hmm. kind of gotten out of hand and you have this four game series, right? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And like, it turns out obviously Kepler migraines really can't play with that. Minor fasciitis can come back. It's unfortunate for Carlos Correa, but like, and then Buxton, we all know why he went out. He was hitting the ribs, but like, you know, I was like that. I, I kind of was like this game's toast. All of a sudden Donovan Solano sets up Royce Lewis and it just, you feel kind of his calm in that moment right that he's just waiting give me something i can hit and dead center you know and, and i just think i think that's just his makeup i he's a really skilled player but also a leader and someone who wants to be wants to deliver in the biggest moments and i think we saw the difference between these teams from last year to this year in that i, I don't know if i ever remember a twins team having the three four and five hitters in the lo lineup come out of the game for any reason i think it's yeah four or five um Donovan Solano is a big league player who's had plenty of yeah. experience. And so they have guys to plug in Kyle Farmer, um, you know, again, even Willie Castro, yeah. I think he had something like a thousand plate appearances with the Tigers before coming over that that's a lot different than putting Jermaine Palacios out there mm -hmm. or yeah. Tim Beckham out in left field. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big difference. And I think that's, that's huge. Uh, back to Royce for a second here. Where does he rank? Because you know you've been going to games as yeah. as a media guy for what a decade now, maybe a little more. 2011. So obviously, I somehow caught the Twins in a terrible year, and then like a really, really big drought. But yes, 2011. Yeah. Right. Where does Royce rank on the all time good guys you've covered? Yeah, I mean he's up there. Obviously, they maybe not a sample size, but you could tell like right away. Even I remember talking to him in spring training when he's still a prospect, hadn't reached the majors, and I was kind of you know there was there was this rep right that like it's funny to look back and think of like how controversial that pick was, right? Because it was like Hunter Green was on the cover uh, and obviously the Falvey and Levine acknowledged that they thought about him. He's and been fine, right? right? He, yeah. And then, well, and then like McKay, and then I'm trying to remember the, who I don't think McKay's reached the majors. And I'm trying to remember there's like, there's like four guys in that mix. Right. Yep. Yep. And so they really leaned into like, you could build a team around Royce Lewis that he's not only skilled and will play up the middle and, 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 you know, is just a really, really good baseball player with a lot of tools, but like he can be a clubhouse leader. And I remember talking to him even when he was very young and being like, yeah, he just has this natural charisma um, that like you can't teach. And I think would be difficult to even develop. Um, and so, yeah, in terms of like where he ranks on that, I mean, yeah, he has. It's really fitting and funny that, like, I think he lives near Tory Hunter and, like, knows his kid. And I'm like, yeah, it seems like you guys would, like, get along, right? Tory Hunter, mm -hmm. you go back to the dance party. Like, it is very funny that as just, like, an older guy, he came back and he was like, yeah, I want to party. We're going to, we're going to get the smoke, the smoke machine out and we're going to, we're going to dance. Brian Dozier is going to dance, whoever else, you know, was on that team. We're going to kind of bring hope back, right? And I think, um, in his own Roy, way, Roy Lewis just has that natural. Um, charisma, really easy to talk to, really pleasant and fun. And and honestly, I, my only hope with him, stay healthy, man. Like, stay yeah. healthy because he can do really big things. Yeah, it's not like Minnesota has ever had a big-time athlete who yeah. couldn't stay healthy. Uh, yeah, top yeah, five yeah. of that draft, Royce Lewis, Hunter Green, Mackenzie yeah. Gore, Brendan McKay, yeah. and Kyle Wright. Kyle Wright, I think, was the other one okay. that was on the list. I don't think I remember Mackenzie Gore being on their radar. But yeah. uh, McKay has made it to the big leagues very briefly negative 0 0.1 baseball reference war so it has not been pretty and then i think he shredded his elbow so oh uh, let's do something here quick one second <laughs> excuse me i've been battling a bit of the uh the uh plague it seems as though oh, no. um we gotta talk about game time and then we'll come back and talk 
about these twins and where they're headed and how they're going to get there. But first, the Game Time app. We've been talking about them for quite some time, GameTime.co, or again, down to, download the app. Tom, you've been to any shows lately, any uh, games where you've actually had to buy a ticket? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I'm fortunate in that, obviously, I spent a lot of time in the press box. I'm trying yeah. to think of last. Um, uh, I go to occasionally go to Loon's games. I'm learning mm-hmm. soccer a little bit. I love the mm-hmm. environment. Very different um, atmosphere than anything else you can get in Minnesota. In terms of shows, I should be more cultured. I think my mom tells me that every time. I think that's how she <laughs> greets me now. She's like, why aren't you cultured? And I was like, I don't well, know. Sandy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to Brooks and Dunn on Saturday, which is going to take me back to like 1993 and CMT on in the house. So uh, just kind of came up. But game time, check that out. You get last minute tickets. You can go to shows. You can go to games. You can go to comedy, whatever you want, whatever you can imagine buying a ticket for. Not going to be stressful. Just go on the game time app, search in your area, Minneapolis, St. Paul. I think I'm going I think I think it's the X on Saturday. So um, other side of the city, but. I've loved going to Target Center area uh, arena for events because um, parking is real easy and all that stuff too. But again, you can go through, just cycle through, find events, and snag the tickets without the stress. With Game Time, just go to the Game Time app or GameTime.co, create an account, and use Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On MLB. That's all one word. For 20% off, download game time today. Last minute minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, you know, we look at the rest of this division, and we'll get to that in our final segment. We're into the bullpen right now. Um, Well, what is roster resource? I like fan graphs. You know I like fan graphs. Mm-hmm. You've known that yeah. for a long time. Roster resource gives the Twins 80, 80.5% chance of winning, making the playoffs 798 for winning the division. Wow. We've noted, but we've noted this for a long time too. That reason that those two gaps are shortest because there's no way in, uh, in, in hell that they're going <laughs> to <wild card. laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. have a wild card in this yeah. division. So they're looking at the twins at 85 and 77. The next best being the guardians at 78 and 84. I'm not that bright, but that's a seven game lead in the division when the season oh my God. ends. That's their projected record. Projected. Sorry, projected. Yeah. Oh and projected is always, conservative like for instance yeah. they have the well they have the a's losing 106 games i'm not sure that they won't oh. have 106 losses before september but yeah um where do you stand like so where did you start this season guessing as far as wins and where do you think they'll settle in because i steadfastly maintain and i'm still I'm, nothing's changed for me i still think this is a good team i think they win 91 games and win the division running away um 91 win projections yeah. In the American League right now, the Rays 97, Yankees 91, the Rangers 92, and the Astros 91. So that would put them right around fourth or fifth best in the American League. I think that's right around where the Twins fit. Um, Rangers. What, what do they have? Still. The What do they have? The Astros at 91 and 71. So, I, so those are conservative. Right? I mean, I guess the A's at some point will, uh, or sorry, the Rays will cool off at some point. The A's are very cold. Um, the uh, but yeah, like that's interesting because obviously the Rangers, not 35 win team. Um, it's very funny. This is an aside, um, and then I'll answer. But like, I was out in New York for a wedding, and I was talking to my friend who's like a diehard Yankee fan, and he had just written it off. Like I had said, I'd been like, oh yeah, I might come out here in October if there's the the typical, you know, Twins clash in, in the Bronx, and uh, and I thought he was like dissing the Twins. He's like, oh, that's not happening. And I was like, well, I mean, the Twins play in a terrible division. He goes, no, 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 no. I have no faith in the Yankees and that, that would, that projection would tell you that uh, mm-hmm. weirdly New York Yankees fans are acting like twins fans, <laughs> but, but, um, but uh, I think the, yeah, I mean, I kind of thought like high eighties, I guess I just misread the division. I thought it'd be like the white Sox were the chief competition. I always kind of think like Cleveland, Cleveland is so funny. Like I think of them as like, a, like the A's when they're right, you know what I mean? Where like they kind of do enough to, to win and then you kind of like, yeah, I don't know if they'll do anything. The, the, the Metrodome twins in like 2003. Yeah, something like that. So I was like, well, you know, the Cleveland may hang around, although I saw more closer to like a 500 team and then I dismissed it. And I don't know what the Tiger, like there's probably projections saying the Tigers are finally going to come back to earth or whatever. But um, 74 you know, and 88 on this one. Okay. Yeah. That seems about right. And like obviously Kansas City is rebuilding. So yeah, I mean, I think. Um, my surprise is more actually with Chicago. Having said that, like the twins have to close this guy. I wrote about this, but they have to like 
close the gap between kind of what they are and ought to be like they yeah. ought to be a better team um it's it's very i mean this just is baseball right where you're like well the pitching's carrying them and like i remember they kept showing that graphic in the houston games of like where the twins ranked in the in the era and like it's slowly i mean obviously joe ryan started affected this and obviously lopez <laughs> star will start will affect it too but it slowly came down and i was like they're not intending to do this but but it is like you are seeing kind of like the pitching come back a little bit to, but it's like even if the pitching kind of normalized a little bit like the hitting should be should be better and that's you know i mean this is kind of the course of 162 games right especially if you have a star player like Correa started slow dealing with a big time injury um especially when you're gonna have some questions about center field depth um the fact that like again the last thing buxton i think needed was to get hit in the rib. no one really needs to get hit in the ribs i think his his response last night was like did you get hit in the ribs he's like don't recommend it <laughs> it's, it's a terrible injury um but like uh, but yeah, I mean, there's going to be fluctuations or whatever. I think it's whether they can kind of hold serve in this exact moment, right? Playing at AL Central team. Um, the fact that like all of a sudden you kind of need this depth and, and to be fair, it's stepped up. And then at some point they have to find their best team, right? Is Walner part of that? Is Larnick part of that? Um, to what extent Castro is? And so like Solano looked like an extra when they got him. I think Lou wrote something about this where he's like, yeah, isn't Solano just like a whole bunch of other guys who are in camp, right? And mm -hmm. again, great pickup i mean i know he's an older player but there is he's delivered when when they've asked him so like they they're just gonna have to figure out like who is their best team and how do they keep that team healthy and i think once they find that formula they should rise both a product of a bad division right but also like a product of they just have not played to their potential yet this season well and the hard thing too is the new schedule you know they're playing the dodgers every year the padres every year the yeah, Braves. Yeah. it's it, it is kind of hard to read. I think, too, what they have coming up here in terms of roster decisions as guys get healthy is uh, a combination of some really good things in that they had – I'll say had just because it's it's the word that comes to mind – to send Matt Wallner back. I mean, yeah, he, yeah. As, yeah, much yeah. As, you, as you may not be amped up about Max Kepler, he's on this team, he's making a bunch of money, he's going to be on the active roster – as guys get healthy, there's going to be some difficult decisions. And you think about Larnick, who, I mean, had pneumonia. Who gets pneumonia in May? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But when he, when, if and when he comes back, um, do they have a spot for him? Because initially, I think we all kind of thought, okay, well, Willie Castro will go back down. Well, now you got Willie Ballgame. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, he's he's kind of he's kind of looked really really good. He's only 26 and he just turned 26. Like this yeah. could be one of their more shrewd pickups in the last few or maybe even more than that years. Um, he, he was initially signed by Cleveland. It looks like he was a July 2nd international yeah. free agent. So yeah. uh, sticking it to his, uh, his old friends, maybe, maybe he and Max Kepler can team up as the Cleveland haters, but um, you know, Walner killing it at St. Paul, Larnick loses yeah. his roster spot due to illness uh, at some point, we have to assume Nick Gordon's going to be healthy and come back. Uh, and then you look at the rest of the injured list players. Hilberto Celestino just started a rehab. Kent Maeda's getting close. I think yeah. Gilbar is on his way back as of this evening. Um, who they'll displace in the bullpen, too? De Leon, out of options. Yeah. Cole Sands, he's kind of working as a long guy, but he's been awesome. Yeah. I think his ERA yeah. is like under one. And then Giovanni Moran, who has been dealing. Um, got two outs with one pitch last time out. I mean, how do you how do you do any better than that? And at this point, I don't really think they're inclined to move on from Emilio Pagan. So, um, <laughs> yeah, when Pagan was warming up, I was like, wait, okay. And to be fair, I mean, obviously, people point to the blowout and blow up in Boston, yeah, LA, all this more 20. Yeah, but I think it's, uh, you're right. I mean, this is going to be any contending team, though, right? Like the smartest thing a GM can do is go, we're going to load up on guys on the fringe of the roster so that we can mitigate against injuries or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And then conversely, it's there's it's good that they have prospects. I mean, that's a simple statement, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's good that guys are pushing them now. In Walner's case, he had struck out, I think, 15 times in 25 at bats mm -hmm. going into his call up. Right. It's actually insane that like he hit that well. I think that's a testament to the hitting coaches here. I mean, I, I again, it, maybe he just also got hot in a couple of games, but like um, that's what he attributed it to. Um, he has gone down since, right, and played well. Yep. He needs to have Bailey Ober's men's mindset, right? Ober should have started, you know, been in the starting rotation. Mm -hmm. He can't tell Kent to like 
hey, see ya. I mean, you have to, you know what I mean? Like, it's a numbers game. No. He went down there. I think he struggled a little bit right away, but pitched well enough to come up. And now he, I mean, he just looks like he belongs. Um, mm-hmm. And so, like, Walner needs to kind of establish that. Walner also is a weird player. He has, like, loud tools, right? So, like, yep. he hits home runs. He That ball where he threw to second, got the guy out at second, um, he kind of lost it in the wall, I think. Like, I don't. Yeah, think, they were I touting think, that play, and it was pretty ugly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like that's the issue with Walner is that like, a I don't know how many people care what he did against the Columbus Clippers, and like that's right. fine, right? But like, right. um, but like, it's harder. Again, people who watch baseball all the time will will notice like Byron Buxton takes these like hyper efficient routes, right? When he's in the yeah. outfield or whatever, um, Walner does not. Um, having said that, he has the tools of being like a former quarterback or mm-hmm. former pitcher, right? Um. Uh, so I feel like he's kind of like out. dollar store Joey Gallo because he's not quite as yeah. athletic as Gallo, and he's obviously never going to play third base yeah, like yeah. Gallo did. But I feel like when they walk into the clubhouse yeah. in Fort Myers that first time, it was like that Spider Man point. Yeah, yeah feel like they knew each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. and that they're identical too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, exactly. And it, obviously, bigger in stature and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a good thing. I have prospects. I think the other thing to remind people is like the Twins went to, and I know all this because. I just wrote a story that you just edited with all this information mm-hmm. in it. But like um, the twins went through this during that 2002 to 2010 period where it was initially right. Jock Jones and McKavich and um, Pierce. I actually and just watched a game of those. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. of those guys, uh, 2001 in, in June. And the significance of that game was lost on me until I saw it. But it was kind of fun. Dick Bramer, Burp Lylevin, uh, a baby faced Anthony LaPanta was the sideline guy. Amazing. And Amazing. then they're like, Oh, hey, by the way, the draft is tomorrow and the Twins have the number one pick. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's the Joe Maurer draft. Yeah. So they're literally talking to Dave St. Peter again. Dave St. Peter 22 years ago looks a little different. Um, yeah. You know, we love DSP. But uh, yeah, that was the that was the eve of the Maurer draft. And I'm sitting here watching A.J. Pierzynski have a big game. Twins win 11-10. They walk off, believe it or not, the Guardians, which was also too kind of cool. Um, yeah. Just amazing how how the game comes full circle like that where uh um you know you, you watch a game you don't even realize what you're watching until it kind of comes to fruition there yeah and i think i mean here's the thing like you may down the road optimally you do a pierzinski trade right works both to create a spot for Maurer, and obviously the giants would have that one back but like i think mm-hmm. the uh it's it's also like you can't have it both ways like the team needs to sign players, sign core players, right? And that yeah. just because you give a guy millions of dollars doesn't mean there's there's not slumps. Like everyone wanted Korea for a reason, and I think he'll be fine, right? Mm-hmm. Bucks and they gave him the contract and he looked like the best player in the world briefly, yeah. right? So like I these just that's the ebbs and flows of a of a guy um under contract like that. Um having said that, like that also means there is gonna be kind of this log jam, right? Because like Lewis could just play short, I think. Yeah, um, for sure. And and if he, he, he might if, if Correa is on the IL with this plantar fasciitis. Yeah, yeah. And and um uh and there will be, you know what I mean? There just will be certain parts of the the roster where even like a Kepler, we're gonna have a jam. And again, that's the Kepler and Planco looking back, we'll, it'll be interesting what we think of. I think Planco universally um positive, but like mm-hmm. the fact that you took a German player at the very least became a really good defensive player had in like incredible season of again, juice ball, mostly pulling it. Right. Mm-hmm. But like, um, uh, but having said that, like, you're right, he's under that contract. It's how options work. I also yep. don't think it's the end of the world that like their triple a situation is so much better now. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you think of like, again, Miranda's another player, like you thought Miranda would be factoring into this. And he's yep. been also the proximity St. Paul being right there is that's, awesome. And that's what I was getting at. The fact that Miranda last year, like, I think was somewhere near Creed Vandalia, right? And they were like, hey, come, come back. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. like I think, yeah. So I think like the their triple A situation is a little bit better um uh in terms of actual proximity or whatever. Right. Um and you should have guys competing for spots, I think, given the yeah. competitive nature of players stuff, they're sharper when when they're kind of forced to hold their ground. Yeah. Now as we come down the home stretch here, seventh inning stretch, I think. My contention would be that Michael A. Taylor is kind of the unheralded hero hmm. of this team. And it's not because he, I mean, he's striking out left and right. And, you know, he pops a homer every now and then he did on, on Thursday night and kind of kept the offense going. Um, but just what he's meant to this team in center, because without him, you're probably waiting on Hilberto Celestino, who was, if we can be candid, a mess last year. Yeah. Um, 
otherwise, you know, I don't know what they're doing in center. Um, you know, Willie Castro, yeah, maybe, maybe out. Gordon, Gordon, yeah. if he didn't get hurt. Yeah. Right. And Castro has been out there, but I've not really been all that impressed. Um, I think he's been kind of the guy that's kind of been the unheralded hero. And then I think Louis Varland for the pitchers, um, yeah. you know, about Brock Stewart probably too, but, um, the way that they've had some of these guys come on on the back end of the roster. And again, I don't know that it's fair to call Taylor a back end of the roster guy because he's a starter and center fielder. But yeah. um, again, they've, they've relied on with Buxton and Correa scuffling. Um, mm-hmm. Some of these guys have come up big for them to keep them afloat. And uh, I think Michael A. Taylor is kind of the one I point to the most. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they needed him last year. I, you know, again, mm-hmm. they, with Lewis, I think they thought like, if you put him in center, a, he's actually he has tools right for that position but also mm-hmm. like he's not he doesn't have like guys sliding underneath his feet or whatever along the base pass or you know he's right. not decelerating well i mean ultimately it didn't work out because he got hurt because of the wall there but like um i didn't the only thing i didn't love about it is it felt like it was out of necessity and i just don't think you should do that with your prospect i feel like the pro you should kind of think prospect first like ceiling first then kind of team needs second but like um what i like about taylor is like at least defensively he's I mean, no one's boxed in, right? But like, he can right. give you a facsimile of that, and then um, better hitter than I thought. I kind of expected him to be like, you know, you, now look, at, you look up the board at Target Field, and you're like, a lot of those numbers don't look good. But I thought, you know, given the projections for a lot of these players this year, it'd be like you'd see some pretty good numbers until you got down to him, and he'd be like, right. yeah, he's there defensively, right? So, um, yeah, I think he's. I mean, another like, I think Kirilov. Um, left-handed hitter contact oh, guy so the fact that yeah and I, now granted it's weird to say he's like unheralded but i think he's kind of been like lost in the shuffle of the young guys maybe because he's been up enough right and stuff like that yeah. and he's just there's expectations for him now but mm-hmm. um coming off a wrist injury which i just don't know how you'd ever hit with something like that right and this is something that's gotten him twice like he looks like the kirloff he was projected to be um uh, I think Varland's a good call. Um, I'm doing a story on him and I talked to, I haven't written it yet, but like talked to Concordia guys. I mean, they, he was throwing like, I guess he always threw hard, you know, he's a football player wrestler. So he had like, you know, raw strength, but like yeah. he was throwing all over the place and they, they kind of in college got him to throw in the strike zone and then the pros a little bit better <laughs> arm angle and, and, and throw some off speed stuff. And like, I think if you just looked at him and took away the context, forget, you know, he's from North St. Paul and Concordia, forget where he got drafted. You're like a mm-hmm. player that size, right? Should throw hard. And as long as you yeah. offset off speed stuff, you could be fourth of it in the rotation. So, yeah, I mean, I think it, it's funny that like I almost view some of these like some of these problems as negatives because it's like, well, how do you get all the prospects up? And like, why is it that the desk players are playing better than some of the starters or whatever? But you're like, that actually is some foundational stuff, right? It happens Every- on good teams. Yes, that's that's what I'm getting at, and it's like, all right. As soon as Correa's right, right, he's got to be Carlos Correa. As soon as Buxton's right, he's got to be Byron Buxton. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you could even go with Lopez. I'm not again. I'm, <laughs> I was talking to someone. Which one? We'll say, well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, to be both. fair, both. Um, yes, and actually, in my mind, both crucial. Um, yeah. Pablo because he's a starter. Um, Jorge, because if he could, I mean, I guess we're getting to the point where like they trust Brock Stewart a lot and that's a really good pickup, but like if yeah. he could actually close games, then you could use Duran occasionally in like high leverage, like when four or five, you know, come up or whatever, uh, three, four five come up yeah. in like the seventh, you could yeah. use him there and then have Lopez close it. Obviously they can't do that now. And I cannot think of anything going worse than the Houston. Like I literally, he kind of came in the game and I was like half watching or whatever. And I was like, wait, is that a replay of, of the home run? Like, when did that score happen in this game? Yep. And then the, it was three pitches later, right? And you could just tell he didn't have the control. And I just in talking to him, he's very frustrated, obviously. But like, um, the fact that it looked like you had the old player, um, the, the Baltimore guy, when he first arrived here, mm-hmm. I mean, if he returns to form, it just gives you some flexibility there. And Brock Stewart, again, like, that's the thing is like, we should be talking about how there are, there's some, sav- Solano is a savvy move. Yep. Brock Stewart, you know what I mean? Like, okay. I don't think he had pitched since 19 or whatever. I mean, there are some things they've done right as much as people will point to look at Yannick Cano over there, right? And look at, you know, what Arise is doing over there and right. all this stuff. I mean, that's fine and valid and, and ultimately it's a results-based business. But like, let's also look at like Solano didn't make sense at the time to, to me. And I was like, well, I was, I was wrong about him. And, and I didn't even think about Brock Stewart really until like maybe late in spring training or something. I'm trying to think of when like, all of a sudden, it was like, yeah, they kind of got a guy, but to have a veteran who throws that hard, right? Really, really valuable in the bullpen. So the last thing I got for you, and we'll let you get out of here, is um, Twins have gone every other with catchers the last 
mm-hmm. six games. Have you gotten a sense for what those guys have meant to this pitching staff? Because you know, it's kind of a chicken and egg. Obviously, without decent pitchers, your catchers aren't going to matter. But yeah, those guys will tip their caps. Uh, outside of Sonny Gray, who calls his own game, um, a lot of those guys rely pretty heavily on the pregame prep of guys like Jeffers and Vasquez. I think it's a good platoon or a good back yeah. and forth. We've seen, you know, we saw uh, Garver and Castro work really well in yeah. 2019. What are you, what's your sense of how this catching tandem is is doing, and have you gotten any sense from pitchers that they are really enjoying throwing to these guys? Yeah, I would say Vasquez, like that's I say, I mean, Grace maybe is a little wrong, but given how he's hitting, like at yeah. least he's off yeah. like that side of it, right? And I think, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Jeffers, Jeffers is like it's crazy that when when again, like I think it was like UNC Wilmington or whatever, like yep. when they made that pick, you were like wait what um, and they said he was and, a hitter and not a not a fielder yeah and i think you know and i think we've seen the hitting side i mean that what 117 off his bat or whatever the other day mm-hmm. and like um, Houston, yep. but yeah but to 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 um yeah i mean i think that part's been important too because as much as there's a little more experience there right joe ryan's benefited from it in his own way but you're also dealing with like an ober and a varlin who are younger guys and mm-hmm. then like I, I as much as you're right like sunny grace is an ecosystem or whatever like He's got to trust the catchers, right? And so does Lopez. They still so, have to block the pitches and stuff. If he throws yeah, yeah, yeah. Curveball, so, he's got to do curveball. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's worked out in its own way. It's just, again, it's another one of those things where the Vasquez signing just everyone was like, yeah, great, you know what I mean? And and now people are starting to question it. So again, I think these things evolve throughout the season or whatever. But in the in the moment, it's like it's very funny to look at what the Twins have accomplished, right? Um, and, and kind of what they've done that people want pitching spend money all this stuff right yeah and then you kind of look at it and you go yeah it looks i mean they look again this is why they're 500 you're like there's some of these elements need to coalesce in order for it to mm-hmm. they really at some point just need to set separate themselves especially if you're gonna if you're thinking how did they break the playoff curse right it's like well you gotta right. play as well as one of the teams in the east or the west yeah yeah, it's kind of like the Jason Castro signing where they wanted to raise the the water level for all their pitchers. And Jack Goyne, who worked for Terry Ryan at the time, was yeah. like, yeah, you know, we're trying to just, you know, build a, a foundation as opposed to just going and getting pitchers. You kind of have to do both of those things. But, um, again, thanks for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. Every day, make sure you check out the show. Uh, we'll see what we have over the weekend. There will at least be some breathless post-game minutes. Twins play the Guardians Friday evening, weather permitting at Target Field. If is Rain Dance Schreier going to be there? Yeah. So here's the thing, and I should. I think Dan, I did Dan game. Myers co- coin that phrase. Yeah, yeah, I think he did, and yeah, I did have a reputation of showing up to games that would rain out. Unfortunately, now now I've I think I've broken the curse, but I have had some bad luck about writing features on players who then like have an adverse thing happen to them. Again, I don't yeah. want that to get back to the clubhouse. It is not intentional, and this is. I think I don't it's think more they watch this. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And I think I think also uh, it's just been kind of the season, right? As soon as Farmer yeah. gets going, horrible injury. As soon as Gordon looks like he's getting going, mm-hmm. horrible injury. You know, even even Cray, I think, signs a light, right? And then this this what will probably be a lingering injury for him. Um, mm-hmm. Boxton didn't need this, you know what I mean? And it's just, I mean, it's the nature of the game. At least they have depth in young players, and who yep. knows? We may just look at a ridiculous season where. It's Donovan Solano and Willie Castro and a whole bunch of young guys like in the Minnesota Twins. I God knows. Well, every World Series team or every playoff team that does well has a guy they look back on and say, man, I'm glad I called that guy. Yeah, we'll yeah. see if the Twins get to that level. Again, 7-10 on Friday at Target Field. Bailey Ober against Aaron Savali. You can catch every pitch of the Twins hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Twins. With that said, that's a wrap for Locked On Twins. For Tom Schreier, this is Brandon Warren saying thanks for hanging out. Excuse me. And make sure you follow at Locked On Twins, at Brandon underscore Warren, at T Schreier 3. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that on the screen. Subscribe, like, give us a five star rating on whatever platform you're listening on or watching. If it's YouTube, hang out in the comment section and send us questions for the seventh inning stretch. Now, with that said, this is Brandon Warren signing off saying thanks for hanging out and have a freaking weekend.